Hey guys, it's Ecolancy Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm also going to continue the videos on IR Foundation. I've been having a lot of fun and I think a lot of you have liked those videos. So this is going to be another example with plane detection and we're going to be adding an inventory that is going to allow us to basically change the prefab that we're adding to the plane detector. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, let me show you what we're going to be doing in this video, which is to implement an inventory feature that is going to allow us to select different objects to place them then in the basically in the augmented world. So what I'm going to be doing is basically changing what we what we did before, which is the script called placement with dragging and dropping controller. So if we look at that, right now it has one game object and this is a prefab that we basically are using to create this sphere. So what I want to do is I want to override that and, and basically give it the prefab that we have selected from a basic UI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, I'm going to change this a little bit. So instead of just doing, we're still going to do a private game object, but I want to expose an object, a property that is going to allow us to override it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a, basically a private. We can do a private and then it's going to be game object. And then we can just say place prefab, which is going to be that property. And we can just basically do a getter and a setter. All right, so that's going to be the first thing. So this is what we're going to be accessing from here to change the game object. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new method to change the object that is selected. So we're just going to say public void. And then we can just say change prefab selection. And then here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take in a name. Awesome. And then what I'm going to do instead of just, you know, selecting the one that, that I already have and, and changing it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that, I'm going to load that from resources. So we're going to do resources and then load. And then I'm just going to give it a path. So this is going to be assets. And then I have prefabs. And then we can just create a folder called dynamic. Awesome. And then what we'll do is we'll say name. We'll just pass in the name that we want to change this to. Awesome. And then what I'll do is I'll just say prefab. So we'll just call or basically our property, which is going to be the, the setter. And then in here, I'm just going to cast it to a game object. So we'll just cast it there. And I think that should work. And I think load. Yep. It just takes in a path. It gets an object back. And then we'll set or or prefab. So I think everything here looks fine. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into the Unity editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another panel. And this is going to be the panel that we're going to be using for, it's going to be kind of like an inventory, but it's going to be very simple. And what we'll do is we'll just duplicate this panel here. And I'll just move it down. It's going to be fairly simple. We're just going to use buttons to determine what object to place. And then we can just call it inventory panel. And then this one, it's going to be the welcome panel. There we go. And in a lot of the in a lot of the videos, I say that I want to keep the scenes as you know as untouched as I can. It looks like I didn't do that on this one, but that's okay. I think this one is going to be optional. You don't need to use the inventory panel if you don't want to use it. It's just going to select the predefined sphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove some of these instructions because we don't need them. We're just going to use the buttons to determine what object to place. So this one is going to be we're just going to use red. And there we go. And then I'll just resize it. Let's just go ahead and. So let's say that we wanted to place a red sphere in AR. So we're just going to select that button to do that. And then if we wanted to do, maybe on this one we'll do blue. Excellent. And then we'll just duplicate it one more time. Let's just do, let's just do three. I think three is fine. So let's just do green. And then we'll just do green here. Awesome. And then we'll just change the button names here. It's going to be red button. And this one is going to be blue. 
and then lastly it's going to be green excellent and i think all of this should be great awesome and okay so let's just go ahead and, and align it so that it looks you know it looks good and we'll move that one we'll move these two and then we'll lastly move this one right here and there we go and i'll just move these down a tiny bit and then we can just move them up so this is going to be our inventory and like i said we're going to have to i want people to you know if they want to hide it they don't they don't want to see it then we probably want to add another button to toggle it so for now i think for this video i'll, I'll just have it always up and what I'll do is I'll add another button later on and then I'll check it in and you can use it. So I think this works just fine. Then back in our back in our code, let's go ahead and add something else in here. So what I want to add is I want to know what object I'm going to be basically I'm going to be selecting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind to I'm going to bind to the button on click event. So I'm just going to say public Let's do private because I like to use so it's gonna be button and it's gonna be red button and then green green button and lastly it's gonna be the blue there we go and then we'll make these ones all serializable excellent I think that works and then what I'll do is on the awake method I'm just gonna bind to those so I'm just gonna say red and then we can just say on click and then we'll add a listener and then our listener is basically going to be the change prefab selection so let's see if i can do it if i can do it without having to do another method so i'm just going to try to use let's try using a lambda and in this one I'm just going to pass in red and yeah it looks like that works that's cool and then we'll do the same thing with the green and i'll do the same thing with the blue and then we'll just hard code these ones here this one's going to be green and this one is going to be blue awesome so what's going to happen is we're going to add listeners to this when somebody actually presses that button is going to trigger this event and this event is going to get the button, basically the color red and then that color red is going to get passed into this change prefab selection and therefore we're going to try to load we're going to actually load that prefab and looks like this is misspelled there we go and let me see i think red is fine Let's actually call it, let's do AR red and then AR green, because those are gonna be the prefabs that I'm gonna create. Okay, so I think we're I think we're good there. And thinking about this, this doesn't need to be public, we can just make it private. And perfect. And we can just say, you know, just make sure that the red button is not null and the green button is not null. And lastly, the we don't want the blue button to be null either. So we'll just make sure that we do some sanity check before we we execute the the changes on the on the selection. Okay, so I think I think that works. We have our prefab here, which is going to set this prefab, and we can add more to the, to this if we wanted to. I think, but I think for this example, this should be great. So AR red, AR green, and AR blue. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder called Dynamics and also add those prefabs. So let's go back into let's go back into Unity and look at the prefabs folder. And look at looks like I don't have the folder yet, so we're just going to create it. This is going to be called Dynamic. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and check the option the object that I have. So we're using the place object large. So I'm going to duplicate that. And this is going to be the one that we're going to use as the basics of the dynamic objects. So this one we can say this is the AR red, and we can say that this one is gonna be the blue, and lastly we're gonna have the AR green. And this red is gonna be a different red. I don't want it to be that same red because it's gonna be it's not gonna be the the same object. So let me go ahead and go back into materials and it looks at like the material that I'm using is called place. So I'm just gonna duplicate that. This one is going to be AR red, and then we'll just duplicate it for each one of the objects that we are creating. And then lastly, we're going to have green. I will just make some quick changes in here. Then I'm just going to enable emission here. I really want it to be very, very, very red, <laughs> if that's even a word, but yeah, I hope it makes sense. And then also the green, we're going to just change it. Let's go ahead and select the green, and I think that works. And I'm going to, I'm going to select the emission so that we get a 
more of a brighter a brighter color there we go and then lastly the blue so let me go ahead and select the blue i think that something like that works and also let's select the the emission which is going to be on the hdr and then let's just do let's see let's just do something like that that is bright okay excellent so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into my prefabs and dynamic and let me go ahead and change the material that i have each one of these ones set to so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change instead of using this place material we're going to be using the one that i so let me go ahead and place them here just for now so that i can we can make changes to them and then i'm going to go back into materials so i'm just going to say the blue with the blue the green with the green and lastly the red with the red awesome and i think all of these should be okay so we'll just set that there and also make sure that we click on the override so that we don't have any pending changes on the prefab okay so i think i think we're good there okay excellent so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to close out of them and actually delete them and so i think we have that there we have the right names and if we go into if we go into scenes i think the last thing that we need to do is basically bind these to the the new options that we have on the script so i'm just gonna associate red with red button blue button with blue button and lastly the green button with the green button so now if i go back into the script let's just double check everything so we're still going to use this it's going to be the default it's going to be the same sphere but we're going to override it as soon as somebody clicks and, so, and changes the selection and then we're going to have three different buttons to basically allow the user the person that is doing the experience to change what type of basically what type of free prefab they're going to have the cool thing with these is we're going to still allow the script to work without them so we're just going to do some sanity checks make sure that these values are not null before we use the new functionality and lastly if this functionality is enabled meaning that, that we have these buttons bound then what we're going to do is we're going to use resource.load to load the assets from our prefabs directory dynamic directory and try to find out if the name passing is basically a prefab that exists and this is something that we probably should be doing as well we could probably just say game object load a game object and just to make sure that we don't get any null exceptions so i think it's good if we say you know if load a game object is not null then we go go ahead and overwrite it this way we can still have a functional experience and we don't break the experience just because we maybe put this in a different directory Okay, so if that is true, then what we're gonna do is just overwrite it. So I think otherwise we can just say for now, we can just add a debug.log and then we can say unable to find a game object with name. And then we can just put in the name that we're gonna be looking for. And then we just use a string interpolation to create that string. And I think everything else looks great so then the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and let's go back into unity i think everything here looks looks fine and then what i'll do is i'll go ahead and get, get this build so i'm just going to say build settings make sure that i have the right the right scene selected so this is dragging and dropping multiple and dragging and dropping multiple is the one that is selected and it's enabled so i'm just going to go ahead and hit build we're going to add it and basically build it to my desktop i'm going to hit save and let's see until so it's now building and creating the project so i'll continue the video as soon as this process finish all right guys so it looks like i had an issue with the implementation of this i was basically putting it under assets prefabs dynamic but if you look at the instructions we need to make sure that we put it under assets resources because the resource that load is basically going to look in that directory so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into Unity and these prefabs need to be in a resources directory, like I said, so I'm just gonna create a resources folder. It's been a while since I've done this, so. And the other thing that I'll do is I'll just go ahead and drag dynamic in it. And then I'll just create a new folder called prefabs. And in fact, we don't need to name it dynamic now that I now that I think about, because anything in here, it's gonna be dynamically loaded. So this is basically extra so we don't need it 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here, and what I'll do is I'll just say that I want to load these from, from the prefabs folder. Now if we go back into Unity and we hit play, I can test it without actually running the experience, so I should be able to hit it. And in fact, this is working because otherwise I would be getting the other error. What we can do here is I can say, instead of just erroring out and then, or actually being successful and not getting anything, we can say game object, we can say game object, we name blah was loaded. And then we can go back into Unity, hit play and see, and see what happens now. And we can say, okay, we can see that AR red was loaded, AR blue was loaded, and AR green was loaded as well. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my Unity, into my Xcode, and then go, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and rebuild this, and then I'll run it in Xcode one more time. So I still have the scene selected. It's going to hit build, and we're going to override the scene that we already created. And we can just say enable replace. That's fine. And then replace. There we go. So now it should be building and we can test it again on my device. So I'll continue as soon as this is completed. All right, guys. So it looks like it's finished building. So what I'm going to do is push it to my iPhone. So let me go ahead and hit play. And I'm also going to start the recording on my phone. Looks like the application is now running. So I want to show you, we're still capturing the planes. So I'm going to start with doing the blue selection. This missing, so you can see that I can now move the blue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the green and then basically place a green object. We can still move it around so I can move it up. I can move it down. I'm going to place another sphere over there that is also of that color. I'm going to go ahead and select the red. This time, so I'm just going to put the red over there, and we can probably just move it through my green screen since it's cap capturing that. So you can see that I'm basically cycling through, and if I want to do the blue this time and move it around, so looks like everything is seems to be working just fine. We can move this one up, I can place another blue there, and then everything is working. So hopefully, that gives you enough information as far as how an inventory would work. But this is for now, I think this is good. I'll keep showing you more in the upcoming videos. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video on AR Foundation. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. They have amazing forums and also a great community that is there to help each other in growing their knowledge base. So also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes early access to source code, and basically a lot of information on what I'm doing with my games as well. So thank you very much, guys.